is a teaching in one of the Buddha's talks. Atichiteja ayoko, heightening the mind. What this means is that we lift the mind above its ordinary concerns. Like when we come here to practice meditation, our normal cares of the day, looking after our own bodies, feeding them, being concerned with what other people think about us, how we interact with them, all the concerns of the day. We put those down and we lift our mind above them and bring them to the meditation object. Because when we look at the affairs of the world, they spin around just like the world does. There's a classic list of eight. Gain, loss, status, loss of status, criticism, censure, pleasure, and pain. These things keep trading places. You can't have the good one without the other one, the bad one. You can't have the bad side without the good side. They keep changing places around and around like this. And if we allow our minds to get caught up in them, <clears throat> It's like getting our clothes caught up in a, a gear of a machine. It keeps pulling us in and pulling us in. If we don't know how to let go, they just pull us in until they mangle our arms, mangle our legs. In other words, if we allow these objects to, or these preoccupations to consume the mind, the mind gets mangled and doesn't have a chance to be its own self. So we don't even know what the mind is like on its own. Because all we know is the mind as a slave to these things, running around wherever they, wherever they force it. So we come to meditate, we have to learn how to lift our mind above these things. All thoughts of past and future we put aside and just bring them to the breath. So the mind doesn't have to spin around anymore, it just stays with the breath coming in and going out. And gains at least one measure of freedom. And from this heightened perspective, we can look at our normal involvement with the world and begin to realize that, for the most part, it doesn't go much. It doesn't go anywhere. It just keeps spinning around, coming back to the same old places over and over and over again. And all that it gets accomplished is the fact that the mind gets more and more worn out. But if we allow the mind to rise above these things so that it doesn't feed on them, doesn't run after them, that's when we begin to get some sense of the mind's worth in and of itself. As the mind gets still, it begins to things begin to settle out. It's just like sediment in the bottom in the bottom of a glass, a glass of water. If you allow the water to stay still for a long time, whatever sediment is in there finally settles out and the mind is clear. This is what happens when you allow the mind to separate from its ordinary concerns and just stay with its meditation. Even when you go back into your normal activities, it's having the sense of the mind as something separate is a very important <coughs> part of the practice. It's part of the day-to-day -day work of practicing the Dharma. We all come to the practice hoping someday that some really great experiences are going to hit in the meditation. Well, they're not going to hit unless you do the day-to-day -day practice. This is why the Buddha insisted that there are four noble truths, and not just the truth of the cessation of suffering, but there's the understanding of suffering, abandoning its cause, developing the path. These are all very important parts of the teaching. These are all noble truths. And the development of the path is largely two things. One, developing qualities enhance the mind's ability to know, to be aware. And then two, learning how to let go of things that are burdens on the mind. This is what it means to heighten the mind. Once you let go of the burdens, the mind begins to float up, to rise above things. And learning how to do this in all activities is very important. Because when the really technicolor experiences hit in the meditation, if you can't rise above them, you're just going to fall for them too. And they eventually just lead you back into the world again. Those attachments lead you back. So a large part of the practice is learning how to lift your mind stage by stage. You get it in, lift it above the ordinary everyday activities, and you get it into a good stage of concentration. In the beginning, it seems like the mind and the object become one. That's when you really are absorbed. 
but as you allow the mind to stay in that state for a while, it begin, then it begins to separate out as well. You begin to see the object as one thing, your awareness is something else, and although they're right next to each other, they are separate things. This is what enables the mind to gain insight, both into itself and into the workings of its objects. It also develops the habit of learning how to let go stage by stage. You rise from one level of concentration to the next to the next. As you pull back the image in the text is of a person sitting a person sitting up looking at a person lying down, or a person standing looking at a person sitting. You pull back bit by bit by bit, stage by stage. No matter how good the state is, you begin to realize you've got to allow the mind to lift above it. And this is especially important when really strong experiences come in the meditation. You don't jump to any conclusions. Again, you lift the mind above and watch. And hopefully by that time the habit has become built in enough so you realize that you can't allow yourself to get attached to anything. Sort of lift yourself up rung by rung by rung along the ladder. You go from one attachment to a higher one to a higher one. Finally, though, there comes a point where you have to let go. And just watch what happens. Only when you've developed this habit of lifting the mind up can you get through some of the experiences that waylay everybody else along the meditation path. So we're not here just for the experience, but we're learning basic skills that we need so that no matter what experience comes in the mind, we don't fall for it. We don't latch onto it so that we don't become a slave to it. Because the whole purpose of the practice is freedom. And yet the habits of the mind are basically enslavement. And even when great feelings of oneness or unity or unlimitedness come into the mind, you find that if on a very subtle level the mind can become enslaved to those as well. And the question is how to learn even from that kind of experience. So the mind ultimately becomes totally free. Even from the state of oneness, even from the state of unlimitedness. Because a lot of those are just states of concentration. Where there's a subtle bit of attachment and a subtle bit of conditioning going on. But if you've developed a habit of learning how to let go and rise above things, even while you live in the midst of them, okay, then you've developed the proper habits, you've developed the skills you need that are going to protect you in all circumstances. There's that fine passage in one of Ajahn Mahabhava's talks where he, at the time of Ajahn Mun's death, he sits and reflects on how he, at the first he feels lost. Here was a teacher he was able to depend on for so long. Now that teacher is gone. So what is he going to do? Well, then he began to realize, well, what were the things that he taught while he was alive? Take those as your teachers. And one constant theme that was, was whatever arises in the mind. If you don't want to get caught up of it, just stay with that sense of knowing, that the knowing as separate from the event in the mind. And no matter what, that experience will pose no dangers for you. So it's by developing this habit of learning how to step back, step back, raise the mind up above its ordinary concerns. This is what's really distinctive about the Buddhist teachings, and distinctive about his approach to the really spectacular experiences in the mind. But if you haven't learned how to develop that approach to ordinary experiences in the mind, then the spectacular ones are just going to overwhelm you. So this is why the path is so important, why it's one of the Four Noble Truths, on a par with the others. So keep this teaching in mind, the question of the heightened mind. Watch out for when you allow the mind to lie beneath its objects, under the power of its objects.
and when you're able to lift it up above them. So that even though you live with them, you're, you live with them. with a sense of rising above them, of not being caught up in them. That's the skill we're working on.